the serpentine and sinuous submissions by Debra and by my learned friend, Senior Counsel John Amino, plus in case he that was breastfeeding, must be faulted for two reasons. Number one, Mr. Haminwa refers to the Richard Nixon impeachment as the first impeachment. When it is clear, my lord, that in the US, the first impeachment was that of President Andrew Johnson in 1868, coming after he dismissed a war general, Mr. Stanton. The Richard Nixon impeachment was the second impeachment coming in 1974, because you said that was the first impeachment, and Nixon resigned. Just important for context. I will not have mentioned the error at all. It's not only just important for context, that in the second impeachment of Richard Nixon, he resigned on the 8th of August, 1974, and thereafter, the next president, Ford, took over for the next three years. I think he's instructing the Lord to refer to this impeachment and take, because of the case of... Let us make things clear. Nixon was never impeached. He resigned. Yeah, I said he resigned. Let us make things clear. After the Watergate scandal, the impeachment commenced and he resigned. And that is what gentlemen do when an impeachment is in there. My Lord, I want to connect this to my submissions, that we shall be relying on the political question doctrine and the finality of impeachments by Senate in a comparative context. But Lord, let me submit that in Gladys Bosch Cholet versus JSC, this court set out a threshold for recusal. And the threshold is, my lords, that a recusal application must be made in good faith. And if the court listen to the histrionics from the petitioners, the courts will note that the application is not made in good faith. It is tied to an intention to extend ex parte orders that advantage the petitioners. The petitioners are intent, my lords and my lady, on scuttling the bench and scaring them away from sitting so that they can have open-ended and irregular orders issued in Kerugoya by Justice Richard Moore. Then they went to the second act of actually filing a complaint with the Judicial Service Commission submitted to Isaac Komasa and duly acknowledged so that this court can be scared away and run away. My Lord, then the scheme was not complete. My Lord, Yaj Ibrahim, at page 31 of the Gladys post Cholet decision, stated, my Lord, that the threshold for impeachments cannot, of, for recusal cannot be so low. And every negotiation made of any form of bias must be through, proved through credible evidence. And Lord, I go, I dive straight to section 11 of the Oaths and Statutory Declarations Act. The petitioner's affidavit, the petitioner made a false affidavit through a deponent who swore to factual issues that the petitioner then attempted to withdraw in court. My Lord, that not only invites a criminal sanction under Section 11, but what is more important, my Lord, is that false affidavits are no affidavits and must be struck off. Because the penultimate paragraph in an affidavit, my Lord, swears to the truthfulness of the whole document. Where, therefore, my Lord, any part of that document is false, the affidavit must be struck off. My Lord, we further submit that to both applications, my Lord, that are before you, parties having been unable
to meet a threshold that would warrant the disqualification of all the judges sitting in this bench, that the applications must fail. I have no doubt, my lords, that we have cited relevant authority. We have cited the authority in Jackson, Malalu, and others, a court of appeal decision on the threshold that learned friend, senior counsel Hamino, wants to lower. He invites the court that at every mention of the possibility of bias, that the court downs its tools. My lord, if that were the case, no judicial proceeding would be conducted in this country. And learned friend, senior counsel, Professor Kino I told you of the number of students that he has taught. I think I've taught more young counsel in this room. And it would be impossible, my lord, if association by way of sharing a classroom or teaching were a threshold or a test for bias, that judges would recuse themselves, my lord. No judge, my lord, would sit on any bench to hear any case because we are extracted from the same uh, um, academic background and a due descent. Unless my line friends are saying that. Oh, yes, uh, my lord, on, in response to the suggestion that the Honorable Justice Brima attended a wedding of the Speaker of the Senate. My lord, that the, that my lord, the Speaker attended the wedding of the Honorable Justice. My lord, the Honorable Justice uh, Kingi, Amazon Kingi, is a peripheral party in the proceedings. Indeed, if you look at the proceedings, my lord, what we have in the proceedings is not Amazon King as a party in his name. It is the office of the speaker as a corporate office who is a defendant or a respondent in this matter. But number two, my lords, the Honorable Speaker King merely presided over the proceedings in Senate and was not a voting member in the sitting of Senate that led to the impeachment of the former deputy president. My Lord Donald Bukingi has not taken part in the appointment of this bench in any form. My Lord, clearly, the petitioners are clutching on straws. And every attempt at ensuring that this court does not proceed seems to be falling by the wayside. I ask the court and I invite the court to consider this application for recusal as another attempt to frustrate the processes of this court and to ensure, my lord, that this bench does not proceed to dispense justice that ought to be dispensed expeditiously in line with the Constitution. I pray for you. My Lord, on the, on the appointments of judges, my Lord, my Lord, I, clearly, if peradventure the argument on conflict extended to who appoints, my Lord, the President appoints all judges and is a party. I think I should, I should have added that ground. Perhaps because the president appoints all judges. But that cannot be a cause for a party seeking a recusal, my lord. Because the president, in performing a constitutional mandate, just like my lord, the CS environment, so Pantuya, exercised her statutory mandate in appointing Florence as a board member, my lord, cannot be a cause or a basis for seeking or asking for comfort. Not soon, parties will then apply for recusal on the basis, my lord, that two judges or a litigant and a judge belong to the same community. Thank you, my lord.
sorry, the kind of friend is quite near me. <coughs> so I think I will. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, just a brief uh, rejoinder to the application, and especially in view of what has actually been disclosed after the arguments. And my lady and my lords, I would be urging you kindly to actually go through these voluminous decisions we have given to you, because part of what some parties are submitting are the same, it's a force on all fours in relation to the matter before you is nothing far from the truth. And the example that has been cited is that of the Rai and Viruga Limited, where it has actually been shown that that authority cited does not in any way relate to what is before you in terms of facts and the applicable law. It has been clearly demonstrated that here disclosure was necessary because... Just a minute, just a minute. Um, we wish to adjourn for, for 10 minutes. We can take for 10 minutes. <laughs>